What's up, everyone? Welcome to the booth. It's going to be a pretty short video, but I wanted to just kind of show what I'm doing in the mastering phase of, uh, of Realm Bound, Sword of the Void. Now, I am not an expert on this. I am just starting to do it this way. So, uh, so my methods will change. My methods will get better. I'm probably doing something wrong. But, um, but I wanted to kind of just show, you know, what I'm doing. This is just kind of, this is very, very much for people who don't do this. <laughs> so if you do this, uh, don't put me under a micros microscope, please. So I'm not recording so I can drink some coffee with creamer. Um, anyway, so... I'm still kind of working on my workflow. So what I used to do was I would edit in Reaper, use some plugins, some some effects, um, render it, and hopefully have everything you know the way I want it mastered that way and everything. And for me, since it was royalty share, especially, it's if I can get it, the quickest I can get it done, the best sounding I can get it done, in and out the door is the best way for me to do it with a royalty share situation. Well, of course, I'm trying to. You know, get better and better, and I take on something new with each project. So this time, I uh, wanted to work, do some spectral editing. So, so I'm not, I won't be editing, technically, some clean up here and there with some spacing probably. But um, this is uh, generally, I think, used in the mastering phase. If you want a, a very good overview of spectral editing and things like that, Don Barnes is amazing. And he's been doing this for years. He's um, he's just incredible. He can explain it very well, way better than me. And um, but I kind of wanted to show what spectral spectral editing was <clears throat> and how I'm using it in the, the mastering phase. So the files have been edited um, for the most part. There may be some spacing issues that I'll clean up in here. Now this is destructive editing, so I don't want to do a whole lot in here. This I kind of want to just basically put the icing on the cake. Uh, it's been, it's gone through Reaper. The effects have been processed through Reaper, rendered that way. And so here, I'm just kind of trying to take out any extra noise, fill in some gaps, um, find any weird clicks, and, and take care of those as I'm working through it. So that's the current process. Now there's a ton of other ways to do it. Um, my next book, my next handful of books will be edited for me. But during that time, as I have someone else editing. I'm going to try to kind of get my own process down for, say, like royalty share uh, projects that are a little more risky that I don't want to put the extra cost into post-production that I need to do it myself. Um, hopefully, I don't have to do much more of that. The hope, is, the hope is the authors or rights holders understand that there is production costs if you want it sounding, excuse me, really, really good, that it, it you can get it turned around quicker if you put in the uh, help pay for the production costs and then... Um, split the royalties. There's different ways of doing it. That's a whole other episode. But um, in this case, I want to, you know, be able to put out really good auditions, um, put out a really good kind of first 15 minutes so the rights holder or author can hear um, what I'm doing and then um, move forward. But, but if, yeah, eventually I do want to... I still I love editing. I do like editing when I have the time. And I always want to kind of keep that skill sharp. Because if I am ever doing this full time, having that skill of editing will be another um, uh, another what's the word? Cash flow? Not cash flow. Um, anyway, another income generator. There's a better word for that, but I'm I've been up since five, so I'm tired. Um, all right, so I'm gonna switch over here to the RX7 standards. What I'm using to do the spectral editing. And let me find, uh, I'm on chapter nine. So I move this into here. And there it is, our spectral image uh, of everything. So there's a lot going on here, um, but you can kind of see visually, you know, the noise floor. Um, now you want it in between, I think, I think ACX wants it to be under 60. My ascent. So you can see, I'm under 60. My. To run. 
So I'm hovering right around there, right in between. So I'm at about negative 65, which I think is pretty good. Um, so, so here, now I'm gonna try not to move around. I, my last video, I, I, I tend to zoom around a lot. So I'm gonna try to be a little more patient and careful here. Here, yeah, as you can see, if you can see on the screen, we have a little noise that popped up. When this is all supposed to be quiet, I got a little noise. You probably can't even hear it. If you listen carefully, you can hear it. It's like a little, it's probably me moving, probably me bumping something. So automatically, I know I want that out of here. So I'm just gonna delete that sucker out of here. It's not, it's not behaving. Of course, there we go, and it's gone. So that's a very simple kind of look at spectral editing, what it can do. Um, this has been through a proofer. This has been through me narrating it. I'm not going to spend a giant amount of time wanting to re-listen everything back. What I want to do is do cleanup. Now, there are certain things where there are noise, nose farts, what they call. So I'm, as I'm moving along, I am trying to listen for that. But I'm always kind of looking ahead as I'm listening. I'm taking care of uh, visually, just taking care of these little uh, you know spikes right here that I know are just noise that I don't want. So I got one little guy there. Um, so I start cleaning it up that way. So now R7, RX7 is very very powerful. Now there are like I said no nose farts and things like that. Squeaks. I've had squeaks. I've had to take care of. And uh, if I see any, I'll show you. If not, no big deal. But um, I'll kind of see if I can find an example. I can, I can, I can actually do an example here, um, right there. But so I'm gonna play the song, and you can kind of see. Chapter nine. See, already. We got a little guy here. Which was when I was editing. Somehow, a little breath that I tried to cut out got in there. So I just take that out. Student of the Art. A student of the art. A student of the art. A student of the art. I may redo that. Not right now, though. Um, so you hear there's nothing there. Nice noise floor. It's hovering right around negative 70. Which is good. It's where you where you want it. You never want it to be perfectly quiet, because that just weird and unsettling. And when it, my first books, I had it perfectly quiet. Sorry. So when you take out breaths, if you have it perfectly quiet, that's when you have people start saying it sounded robotic. It sounded robotic, and maybe your narration wasn't technically robotic but it was the fact that there was no breaths and zero noise in between your talking that it sounds like a voice to text because it sounds almost like it doesn't sound like a person reading. So the trick is with narration is to try to make it sound like you're reading to someone. And uh, I had to learn to stop doing the projection. Um, I'm still trying to perfect my delivery and everything. The sounds. The spell weavers employed the use of spell rings to manipulate their arcane power. Their differences in both their powers and ideals sparked a heated rivalry among the two factions, one that spanned the history of the realm. From the Codex of the Realms. Now we have a right here. I was moving a lot. Now, I think I was kind of trusting maybe that the plugins that I would run would take care of these. I run a mouth declick. Um, and I'm not going to run that here. I mean, I guess I could try. Let's try it. Mouth declick. Um, I don't know. Let's crank the sensitivity up. It kind of takes them down a little bit. Let's do it like this. Nah. So I'm going to undo that. Now, 
I'm going to try to work on different workflows. What I eventually would like to do is record in Reaper, punch and roll, record, then um, have it edited, and then take it into Rx for processing and cleanup and do all the processing and stuff in here and then, you know, be done with it. I don't know. We'll see. I'm still trying to see kind of the method I want to pursue, kind of talk to other people what they're doing. But like I said, I'm hoping that my workflow is just me recording and then sending it off to an editor and then moving forward. And hopefully, mathematically, it'll work out with the royalty share. Um, and then with a good portfolio, that will bring, you know, more paid work. I've had some, but it would be nice to have at least royalty share plus, which is a the author or the or the rights holder will pay for the production costs, which generally are between sixty five and seventy five dollars per finished hour. So a ten hour book is going to cost you between six hundred fifty to seven hundred fifty to get edited. So now. You know, mathematically, if you look at royalties, I know exactly how many books I need to sell to break even and then make a profit. That's, you know, that's okay. But royalty share, straight royalty share for me has been a way to build my portfolio. Some companies operate only, some publishers are only royalty share. It's unfortunate because it, there's a lot of good narrators that just won't work with those companies. Um, or those narrators will kind of work with them for a while and then move on. I hope I don't have to make those types of decisions, but uh, we'll see. The hope is at least to get the production cost paid for by the publisher, um, or we split the cost. We figure something out, you know. Um, but it does get pricey when you're hiring out, but it saves time. I can just narrate, turn it over to post production, have that get done, come back, we got the finished product, and then I. Meanwhile, as it's out with a with a editor, I'm starting my next project. So you can turn around more in a month. And like I said, with me doing this part-time, this speed is kind of key with me pumping these out if I want to build my portfolio. Now, I kept her hands pressed tightly into her pockets as she traversed the streets of Bolivar. A few days in the town had given her some clear distinction. So here's where someone like Don Barnes knows his shit. Now, I know very, like, I know just enough to kind of you know, maybe working my way around it. But for me, it's a lot of trial and error. I know that Don is getting is, is very good at explaining this. He's very good at figuring this out. Um, so somewhere in here, I'm pointing at the screen you can't see. Somewhere in here is the squeak, right? Now, you know, some cl some cl some clear distinct. Some clear to some clear. Now, you know, maybe I can just delete that. Actually, actually worked. Given her some clear distinction. That might that might work, and that's probably what I will do. Is just take that out. Now there are ways you can kind of find different areas to kind of take care of that squeak. This is just me highlighting this little area here and putting delete. Some clear to, some clear distinctions. Now it's gone. Distinctions about where to go. Distinctions. Clear distinction. Where did it go? Still getting used to this. Okay, there that is. Clear to some clear to some so clear to some clear to. So now that's gone. So I just basically took that area down here that was kind of the squeak, was able to delete it, but just with the delete button. There is a, a thing called spectral repair that you can do to, to mess with this see, for a little more surgical pr precision. Um, I've used that before, so, but I'm kind of like right now, like I said, I'm in a bit of experimentation mode, and, um, someone like Don Barnes, um, he has an actual whole 
curriculum you can actually take and learn the stuff um, if you're just getting started. And what I should have done, of course, with me, I'm always learning on the fly because I was, you know, because I'm working full time and family and everything. I'm kind of take, you know, taking little pieces and learning them as I go. If I need it, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna get it. If you know nothing about all this stuff, I mean, I went to college for this stuff. If you don't know nothing about all this stuff, definitely look into Don Barnes' um, RX-7, kind of introduction to RX-7. Fantastic. This is turning into an infomer infomercial for Don Barnes, but he really is the best. And it's about the place. Where and here I got, I heard a little, I think. Or is that just me? Where I was hearing myself. So... I have the mic on right now, so I'm hearing my room noise and stuff. So it's not the best scenario for me to be really listening and getting this in, but I'm kind of just showing you guys a little bit of what I do. It's about the place where to tread light. And I'll probably do that was a bit of a big gap. So now I'm, you know, gonna close these, close these in. Now this is destructive editing. Um, I can't get this back, whereas you know Reaper, I can move things around, take, you know, get things back. Um, at this point in the process, if it's closing gaps like this, I don't really care. I can add a gap back if I need to. Um, I have, I save this, you know what, I, I, I didn't save this here. Let me save as, uh, I'm going to save this as a mastered version. That way the original WAV file is still there, just in case. So everything I do here when I save it, it's all uploaded, saved. I can convert it to MP3 and go from there. But so, you know, I don't have to re render anything. So that's kind of nice. That's why this the last stage is kind of this, this stage. So, and like I said, um, I'm still kind of trying to really hone in my process. Place where to tread lightly so it could all change next week. And where she could do as she pleases. The more. Yeah, that was a bit of a too long of a gap there. And I kind of just play this by ear. So there's no rules. Like sometimes, depending on the scenario, you'll leave a longer gap. I kind of, just how I feel, you know. She pleases. The more time she spent there, the more the class distinction between its inhabitants became apparent. There's a little click. Let's zoom in on it so you can see it. A little click right there. Now, I can delete it if I, if I want to keep the gap. Now, this isn't really going to affect anything. But if I want to just get rid of it, I got this, we've got this cool little paint tool. You just kind of do that. And then I can do spectral repair. And I can click render a couple times, and it kind of gets rid of it. Blends it in. Cannot hear it anymore. Now this is a big kind of a big gap. It is about um, eh, over a second long, so we can kind of take it in a little bit. And I'll probably just take out this area that had the offend the offending line in it anyway. A small group of men and women worked in the fields, harvesting those strange speckled fruits known as ultaberries, while most of the others worked on building walls. Or reinforcing. Now I'm gonna close in this gap because it's too long of a gap because it's still kind of the same train of thought. While most of the others worked on building walls, or so now here's a, a breath. Breaths are controversial in the narrator world. I have, for me personally, I have decided to keep them in as much as possible if they're not distracting. If there's a distracting gasp. Uh, or if it's a little bit too much in a row and it's just kind of like doesn't sound natural in a sense of <gasps> like too much, then I'll kind of take a few out and leave in kind of transitional breaths. So this one, this one's okay, but you know, if I want to, I can just, I just, what I've been doing is just kind of messing with the gain and just kind of bringing it down so I can bring it down, I don't know, 12 dBs. I can just type that if I want to, but bring it down. It brings it down. Walls or rein. Good night. Jeez, what you got, you, you guys? I'm videotaping. Hi.
Good night. Good night. Love you. He's see, I try to work, and then they just, boom, bam! They open the door like that, and it scares the heck out of me. Okay, I'll be up in a sec to say goodnight to everybody officially. Well, take a fucking shower. Noah's already in bed, so I'll be there to kind of think. Jacob's watching watching a show. <sighs> see, I can't hear anything, and then they pop open the door and it just scares the hell out of me every time. I forgot to turn on my little light. I normally have a uh, a light that says I'm recording. What was I doing? Um, good God almighty. So, so you can hear the, so you, can, you can still hear the breath but it's not as you know offensive to those who do not like hearing breaths in their ears. Balls, or reinforcing the already marvelous structures lined up and down the streets. Stone hands, they were called. Let's, let's zoom in a tiny bit. I'm going to bring in the gap there. Because now it's like, blah, 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 blah. Stone hands, they were called. So maybe kind of close it in to finish the thought. Streets, stone hands, they were called. So here's an example of a breath I'm going to take out because it's Recall. quiet. Many of the. So I can leave it, if I, leave it in if I want and just take this gap out. On these, I kind of seem to just take the breath out on this segment. They were called. Many of the people were transplants from Earth, complete with the tired, weary express. Excuse me. Um. So there we have a weird sound I'm going to take out. Let's take that out. Weary expressions they'd grown accustomed to in their old lives. The only time that changed was when they scowled. We will take that guy out. Like I said, it's all, you know, I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not. I kind of just am kind of going by feeling. Um, I just feel like the delay and then the breath, I already had a breath before there. You know, I can either lessen it or just take it out and kind of see how, how it sounds. The only time that changed was when they scowled at a spell. Changed was when so now I got what I call a glorious no nose fart. So these tend, so I'm going to try to do this here. I think this is it right here. Like right here. I think. Right there. I'm going to see if I can use uh, spectral repair and take it out. And lessen it, see if this helps. Now this is me experimenting because I haven't... When they A lot of times they're so inconsequential I don't really you know, mess with it. Especially on this one I kind of really helped try to make sure I was hydrated and all that, but they happen. You can still hear it. Or it's down here. So that one I just deleted. Changed was when they changed was when it's a little bit better. Changed was when they so I'll probably leave it. It's no big deal. No one's really, no one's gonna notice it. But those are the things that I need to basically work with Don Barnes on, and um, really try to nail down how to remove those because they do get annoying when they just appear. And if I'm in this stage, I don't really want to record anything again. I want to be able to take care of it. Um. Changed was when they scowled at a spell weaver. So yeah, so you didn't notice that nose fart this time around. So I want, the whole goal is to try to be able to take stuff like that out as I hear them. So it's not just super annoying, but to pass by on the road. Oh, what was that? <laughs> that was uh.
I had done a second take. I thought I edited out the second thing, but it obviously did not. So we will just get rid of that. I see a little thing there, a little noise. Road. The spell weavers were disliked among Boulevard's working class. Viewed another. So what's great is, I can look ahead. I already knew that I had something to take care of right here. If I was listening, I'm not going to do it in front of you because I don't want to make anyone dizzy. But if I was listening along and looking ahead here, I could just take that out before On the, road. the cursor even before the cursor even gets there. The spell weavers were disliked among Boulevard. Let's see if I can do this. Here. Boulevard's working class, viewed as some sort of untouchable nobility with access to powers that they dreamed of but couldn't hope to wield. That was Karina's plight. She'd stayed behind despite Darian's objections, hoping that she could learn to access that power herself. Now, though, without the money or the means, becoming... Take out that little noise there. And I bring these breaths down just a tad. Now, though, without the money or the means, becoming a spell weaver was highly unlikely. So, so down here I got something. Down here is a little rumble. It doesn't come through, luckily. But <laughs> sometimes um, those I've noticed are my dog snoring outside of the booth. <laughs> or, um... Or... Or, um, like, someone slamming a cabinet in the kitchen, then that noise somehow comes through. I can just take, I'm taking that out anyway. She walked, fiddling with the handful of coins tucked into the pocket of her tunic. So, that's what I'm doing here, that's what, that's what I'm learning. So, um, am I, is my method perfect right now? No. Um, but I'm... If you're thinking about possibly pursuing this, um, it's a really good tool. Um, really good at kind of getting rid of certain annoying noises that maybe you can't edit out or you don't notice there. But when you're at the mastering stage, the final stage, trying to get this ready to go to Audible, um, you know, you want to make sure you don't have anything in the background and any dogs barking, anything like that. I would hope that if you're wanting to pursue audiobook narration that you want to do it right and that you're not, like, in a blanket fort, um, you know, with trying to do this at midnight when everyone's sleeping, so you're talking really quiet, and this is how you're narrating the book. You know, really look into kind of doing it right. There's a website, because I've had a lot of people lately asking me, and I am not in a position to train anyone to really... I can show you what I'm doing now, but that's about it. But there's a, a website called Narrator's Roadmap. So look up Narrator's Roadmap. Um, look that up. There's a lot of information there. If you want some technical know-how on how to edit and master, Don Barnes, B-A-A-R-N-E-S. Um, check out his stuff. But there's a lot of resources out there. And... Um, and do it right. Don't think that you're just going to kind of learn, if you've never done this before, that you're just going to like learn as you go. Um, it's going to be a harder road. You're going to run into so much more frustration. Um, you might get scammed because there are scams out there. Um, you know, you just want to make sure you're doing it right. So, all right, I got to get to work. I got to hunker down and, and knock these chapters out because I've probably uh, ruined my quota for the night by doing this. But I wanted to kind of show you you know, the spectral editing part of it. And, um, you know, when I dial down a, a you know, a, a good method that works, I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. And, you know, if you do this, we can compare. And if you have any tips and pointers for me, great. You know, send those my way. So, um, so yeah, that's it. That's spectral editing. I hope you enjoyed this and kind of seeing, you know, behind the scenes and like I said, this isn't for any of you professionals out there because <laughs> you guys know better ways of doing this stuff. But a lot of people ask me what I do, and right now this is what I'm doing.
And uh, like I said, but uh, I'm not here to, I, I can't train anyone or I can show you what I'm doing, but look into coaching, look into narrator's roadmap, look into someone like Don Barnes to help you with your technical side of things. And your journey into narration uh, will be so much smoother than mine. And uh, it could be fun. You know, it's work, but it's fun. All right. Well, um, I'll talk to you all next time. Keep on creating and all that stuff. And I'll talk to you soon.